Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Welcome to the final episode of this mini series about the project page in Studio One. If you didn't catch the other episodes, then just follow this link to the playlist right here. Let's dive in and talk about exporting our songs from the project page. So there are a few different methods for publishing your album or EP or single from the project page. I'll do a quick overview now. At the top we can see there's a burn option here. This is for burning audio CDs, okay? So we'll click on that. Now I don't have a CB, CD burner hooked up to my computer anymore, so I can't demonstrate this to you. But if there was one there, I would select the device here, I would select the speed, and you know, fairly self-explanatory options there. Now, I will just mention this is an audio CD, remember? So we're not burning um you know the wave files or mp3s or what have you to the cd this is to be used in an audio cd player and you can do that directly from the project page here okay so that's the first option the second option is called image now what this does is it creates one big audio file in this case the format is selected as mp3 but we could select a number of different formats we'll select wave for example there we can select the resolution you know the, the and, and things like the sample rate and what have you there but what it's going to produce here is one long audio file with all of our songs on it okay so it's just like kind of listening to a whole cd but you can't sort of skip from one track to another or what have you so that's what that's going to do there now if we cancel that uh, the next one is called a ddp image now this is probably not going to be used too often by a lot of people but essentially a ddp image is a format which is useful for companies like uh, cd duplication companies okay so all you need to do is just click on it there and it's just going to ask you if you want to go ahead and create an image it actually creates quite a lot of files a number of different files so you would need to send all of those to your cd duplication company and they will make use of them and just make sure you get a really faithful uh, copy as you intended of your cd finally i'll cancel that we have the digital release this is by far going to be the most common method for most of us it's got two main purposes one, if you just want to be able to listen to your music right away, perhaps on an MP3 player or, or in your car or what have you, or if you actually want to publish your music uh, via a streaming service such as Spotify, iTunes, etc., you click on that and it brings up these options and we'll look at that in more detail now. So the first thing we want to do for a digital release is just select which of our tracks we're going to include in it. So we can do that with the check boxes up here. We can then set a location, you know, file location where we will actually export to. We've got a number of different options over here about the format of, you know, the file name, etc., etc., whether we include the artists or the track numbers, all that kind of thing. But the main thing I want to focus on is this middle area. This is the format. Now, there's a number of different formats that we can choose here, but I want to focus on two of them because they sort of differentiate two distinct reasons uh, why we would be creating a digital release. So the first one is if we were releasing this just so we can listen to it right away, perhaps we want to send these files via email to some of our friends, or we just want to put them on our phone to listen to, that kind of thing. In that case, then MP3 is a decent format. Okay, it's a nice file size and it can be emailed relatively easily as well. So I would select MP3 in that case. You can do various formats, but you know, in this case, I would just be having the one. Okay, you can go ahead and select the sample rate, whatever you think is best there. I generally keep it the same as my project and you know, however I recorded the tracks. So most of my track, all my tracks, in fact, I record at 48 kilohertz as a sample rate. Um, and you've got choices like constant bit rate, variable bit rate, and the actual bit rate here. If you do uh, want to select that, look, a lot of the time you can, these days, you can just select the highest ones, still going to be emailable as long as it's a reasonable length track. So that's the scenario where you would use MP3s. You do not want to export and use an MP3 if you're going to be releasing these songs to a streaming service such as Spotify, okay? Now, I release all of my music through DistroKid, and it's going to upload the files to Spotify, iTunes, 
you know, all of the different places automatically. But in all cases, we want a much higher quality file than an MP3 file. Now, you could, if the service will accept it, choose things like perhaps FLAC or something like that. But more often than not, a WAV file is fine. So that's going to be an uncompressed WAV file, really good quality. Again, I would just go ahead and select the resolution. I'm just going to keep it the same as my tracks there. That's fine. And I could go ahead and just click on OK and publish. And it's just going to create all of all of the song files or the individual song files ready for me to upload them to in my case distro kid okay so that's the main things that we want to think about now there's a couple of little things i want to mention here first of all we can get some control over the loudness here and the specifications of the platform we're releasing to i don't want to go into too much detail about these settings laughs and um, the true peak etc but you should just know that lots of the platforms will specify this. And uh, Studio One's project page knows about that and has some presets for you to choose from. So if you kind of know that you're going to be releasing to streaming services such as Spotify, then Spotify would be a good preset. And it's going to adjust the loudness to target a uh, minus 14 lofts and a minus one true peak there. OK, now you may have already done this in your mastering you may want control over this yourself in which case you could uncheck that okay but if you just want project that if you want studio one to do this for you kind of automatically then that would be a good way to go now with all of the methods that we looked at already i just want to quickly mention that you can as well as exporting these files you can also do a little bit of publishing online if you've got that all set up so you can go down to publishing here you can upload to persona sphere if you're a member there and you can also upload directly to soundcloud if you've got that set up in your account and that's our final episode in this little mini series about the project page. I think it's a really awesome feature that we get here in Studio One. And I look forward to hearing about the music which you release. Now, if you're looking for some more inspiration with Studio One and some secret tips that you may not know about, then I suggest you watch this video right here.